Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Josh Coker here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And in this video, we're actually talking about story structure. We're going to discuss the major plot events. And this message is coming to you in part by StoryNinjas.com, stories that pack a punch. You can go ahead and check them out at story-ninjas.com. And let me really quick do a screen share here, and we'll just jump right into our presentation. Okay, so you guys are going to see the infinity screen. And I'm going to switch over here. Okay. How to structure your story. We're going to discuss the major plot events. All right, overview. First, we're going to discuss what uh, just the general structure of every story and all the different components that comprise a narrative. Then we'll discuss the three types of major plot events, and then we'll get right into them. We'll talk about the acts, we'll talk about the stages, and we'll talk about the steps. So here we go. Story structure is comprised of all kinds of stuff. And I'll, I'll have a, uh, an illustration here in, in a slide or two. But you have the theme. You have the major plot events, which are the acts, the stages, the steps. You also have conflict, tension, tone, the outer and inner journey, the context, and the subtext. These are all things when looking at your story at a macro level, meaning when you look at it from a big picture, this is what you're, this is what you're looking at. This is also in, when you're starting to develop your story, these are the aspects that you wanna think about, that you wanna brainstorm about, and you want to, to manipulate in order to see if the story is going to, to hold together before you jump in and start writing, I would say, any word. And uh, particularly, the main things that you're going to be looking at are the acts, the stages, and the steps, which are the major plot events. So here is an illustration that shows all of these things coming together. This is, this is what's going on in a fiction author's mind as they're trying to develop their story. These are all the different things that are playing a part in a story, particularly a story that's that's set up for commercial fiction, okay? You, and, and I'm not gonna go over all these things, but as you can see, I mean, this, this is a, a very, um, it's a busy slide. And I don't like to do busy slides, but this one is busy on purpose to show you all the different things that go into creating a solid fiction narrative. And you can, you can see a lot of the things that I discussed on this slide, you can see them here. Now, the reason why I, I did this depiction, this uh, illustration is because I want you guys to think of it as when you, when you create a story, it's like you're constructing, it's like you're an architect and you're creating the blueprints for a house. And so you have the front yard, where the actual house is, and then the backyard. And then you have all these different aspects. You have, you know, with the house, you have the roof. But in story, in the story mindset, you have conflict. Conflict covers everything in a story. And the foundation of a story is based on its theme. And the theme, right, there's tension. It holds the tension, which is the underlying conflict of the story. There's all kinds of things that are going on in this slide, and I'm not going to walk through all of them, but I just want you guys to see there is a lot that goes into putting a story together. Now, this slide here, it's a little bit more cleaned up, a little less busy. Just to show you guys what we're going to be discussing, here we have the acts, okay? And again, we're looking at our story big picture. There's three main acts or three main sections of our story and then we have our stages and the stages as you can see they're split up into four different sections 
Two of the sections, though, are in Act Two. And anybody who's familiar with the modern myth, and particularly the modern modern myth, which is what I primarily speak about and talk about, that's a major aspect is that Act Two comprises 50% of any given story, this is this holds true in most movies. This holds true in most novels. This holds true holds true in most plays. Act two is the largest act. This is where we do the most work. That's why it's within the quote unquote house. Whereas the separation act, which is the the first act, that's where the person enters into the story. So they're just getting accustomed to it. Act three is where they're just they're 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 the story's winding down not necessarily in action, but it's coming towards the end and they're about to leave the story. So these are all the things that are going on. Now let's actually talk about what are the three major plot events, and I've already alluded to them. You have your acts, your stages, and your steps. Those are the three major plot events, the three major category categories you can dice up your plot in order to organize it, in order to plan, in order to brainstorm. And when you get these hammered out and you know exactly what they are, you can look at your story at a high level kind of Google Earth view and you can zoom in and zoom out um, and identify where the weaknesses are in your story where there might be missing plot points in your story. And once all of this is fleshed out and everything works together and it's seamless, that's when I would say you're ready to start really writing, getting into the details, getting into the action, the dialogue, all the other stuff. And just so you guys know, yes, there are made minor plot events as well. We call these scenes. And then the next level under scenes is beats. And then the next level under beats is transactions. And let me just pause here to let you guys know the reason why I'm making this video is because I got a question from one of my followers and I believe his name is Jason. And I don't have it up with me, but he basically, he said, Josh, in one of your videos, you talked about the difference between, let's go back here, stages and steps. You, you mentioned it, but you didn't really elaborate. That's the whole purpose of this video is so that we can discuss what is the difference between an act, a stage, and a step so that you can understand how to sort of mentally categorize your story. Again, because once you've got this down, you can really zoom in and zoom out of your story and know and diagnose where there's issues and where there's strengths and all this other stuff. So all right, let's go go back here. All right, let's talk about the acts now. Acts are the largest type of plot event. Most stories have three acts. This is like historically speaking, ever since the beginning of time, and and that's a a huge part of the uh, of the monomyth approach in and of itself is that there there is this three act story and it's broken down into what we call the departure, the initiation and the return. So let's take a look at that. The departure. And again, I have other videos that talk about these in way more detail. This is just a high level view. The departure is it starts out with the hero who has a psychological flaw. They meet a mentor and then they leave their known world for an adventure, okay? And when they go on that adventure, they, they leave what they know, their mundane world, their known world, and they leave towards what's called the unknown world, a place where the hero has never been before. Some people call it the special world. Some people even call it the magical world because it's a world, at least to the hero, that seems filled with magic and things that they've never seen before or can comprehend. So that leads us into the initi initiation act. And during the initiation act, the hero faces several trials in the unknown world. Then they face a major challenge, usually around the midpoint. And then ultimately they achieve enlightenment. 
Now, this enlightenment is directly tied to the major flaw that they started out with in the beginning of the story. Then in the return, the hero returns to the, uh, to the known world with the boon, which is basically the reward. It's usually an elixir or some sort of special power or weapon. Um, sometimes it can be plans to like a, a Death Star or something like that. And then uh, they overcome their flaw in order to restore society. All right. And here I have another graphic that just de depicts what's going on. Here's Act 1. You start out in the normal world. They depart the normal world. They cross the threshold into Act 2. As you can see, Act 2 is huge, right? It takes up half of this circle. And... You have, we're not going to really go into this today, but you have two, two parts, the initiation phase and then the transformation phase where the hero is enlightened. Then they cross back into the threshold, into the known world again in Act 3, and they use the, the new powers and, and knowledge that they learned here in the special world to restore society in the known world. And that is the three-act structure. So now let's talk about stages. Each act is comprised of about six stages. Stages are medium-sized major plot events. They're still a major plot event, meaning that they're critical. But they're medium-sized. They're, as you can see, like if, if, if your story can be broken up into three sections, then those three major acts can be broken up yet again into another six is what i'm saying okay now most monomythic stories most stories that follow the monomyth approach or the the hero's journey format utilize each of these stages that's not to say that they're required and that's not to say that they're uh, mandatory but i would say that 90 percent of successful both modern and historical uh, stories, narratives, use most of these stages. So let's just take an example, t take a look at some examples for an Act 1 stage, okay? In Act 1, you're going to get the call to adventure, the refusal of the call, the hero is going to meet the mentor, oh, so that's three examples. There, there's a couple others. Um, in the modern monomyth, particularly in a lot of my writings and, and stuff, uh, I've broken out yet another stage, which I call the mundane world, and there's a whole reason for that. Um, the hero is also, there's crossing the threshold. That's another stage. Belly of the whale is another stage. So those are all stages that that are, for the most part, utilized in all monomyth type stories. Now a step is when you take a stage and you break it down even further, okay? Each stage is broken into various steps. There is no exact number and each stage has a different amount. And these steps are the smallest size, sized major plot event, meaning that they are critical to the plot succeeding. A minor plot event can be kind of, it's not as critical. You could mess up on it or you could, it could not be as impactful or, or maybe, you know, you didn't utilize it well. There's a lot of things you can do with a minor plot event, like a scene, a beat, or a transaction where it, if it doesn't hit as hard, it's not a big deal. But a step, if, even if the step is uh, optional, right? then if you, do, if you mess it up, it can cause a major problem in your story. That's why we call these major plot events, because they're, they're critical to the, the, the success of your story. And as I kind of alluded to just a second ago, many steps are optional. Not all steps. There are some steps that I would say are critical, but there's so many... I mean, there's like hundreds within a story. I can't list them all out in this video, but just you want to keep this in mind because, uh, so for example, I'll give you an example of uh, 
an optional plot event. You may have your hero, mm, their foster parent is also what is called the um, the false ally or sometimes the, the false mentor. And that means this individual will give them uh, a task that's going to lead them on their adventure only to later find out that that person was plotting against them the whole time. And I believe this happens in Jason in the, in the Argonauts, but um, you, there are, there are, there are just so many, there, there are, I can't even think right now, but I'm trying, um, let's see. You can, oh, so for example, another step that happens like later on in the story is sometimes, many times, a mentor will go on their own little side journey that's going to help the, the, uh, the rest of the hero's team. So for example, Obi-Wan going off into the, the, the Death Star's tractor beam to shut it down. Or Gandalf going. Gandalf goes off on several of these what I call mentor missions, while they are not necessary, so they're optional. They they are a step that is commonly seen in many of these monomythic stories. So keep that in mind. But so the difference between a step and a stage, aside aside from the size of it, would be that most stages are are used. Whereas steps, there are many steps that are optional. And, and also many steps that are interchangeable, if I can go back to that for a second. Like, um, you may have one step that's like, the mentor dies. Well, maybe the mentor doesn't die, maybe uh, sidekick dies. Or maybe, um, in, instead of that, the... Uh, so uh, uh, sometimes too, like when you go to the, the boon, the achievement of the boon, there's two steps that could happen. One is the villain can take possession of the boon. The other is that the hero can take possession of the boon. So each of those are a step, but if the villain takes possession of the boon, then you may not use the step, that the hero, the step of the hero taking possession of the boon. And interestingly enough, there's a combination step of that as well, where both receive a boon. And to just give you a quick example of that, when Luke Skywalker and his team leave the Death Star with the plans that were in R2-D2 and they leave with Princess Leia, they, uh, they took possession of the boon. But at the same time, Darth Vader and, and Grand Moff Tarkin also because they put a homing device on the Millennium Falcon, they took possession of the boon in terms of they found the location of the hidden rebel base. So in that, so again, steps are optional. Sometimes steps can be interchangeable. So that's kind of the difference there. So let's just take a look at a few of the steps. I already talked about a couple. In the call to adventure stage, here are some of the steps. You have the opening image. So th again, think of Star Wars. In Star Wars, the opening image, especially in the original trilogy, and in most of the in most of the other movies, I believe, it's always you're in space and then you see this ship coming, or you see ships. In the very first Star Wars, you're in space and you see a you see a Star Destroyer, this giant ship. That's the opening image. Then you have the opening sequence, which the opening image, so the, the opening image kind of sets the tone and gives the audience an idea of what the story is. The opening sequence just dives deeper into that. So again, if we go back to A New Hope, we see the, the Star Destroyer, uh, and actually it's chasing after this, um, it's chasing after this, like I think it's a Carillion Corvette or something um, that Leia's in, and, and it's shooting after it, right? Then we see them board the ship, and we see Vader and, and the stormtroopers like take over and then like capture Leia. That's the opening sequence. The mysterious threat, I just kind of alluded to that. That's when we see Darth Vader for the first time. <clears throat> and the audience is asking themselves, who is this 
this, uh, you know, cyborg looking man who who's in control of all of these soldiers, you know, what's going on. And um, obviously he's looking for something, but they're not quite sure. So that's the, the mystery behind it. Um, then you have the hook. And, the, and actually the hook, kind of, all of these things kind of combine into the hook. But the hook, basically, it, bro it poses a problem to the story or to the readers or to the audience. And it says, what is, what is the problem that the hero is going to solve? For, for Star Wars, the hook is that Vader captured the princess. And although we don't know much about either of those two characters, we know that the Vader is bad and the princess is good. And that the hero is somehow going to have to rectify that that problem. That's the hook. Um, for those of you that have read the Da Vinci Code, in the prologue, it talks about the museum curator being murdered by I forget the the character's name, but he's like the um, he's like the henchman of the main bad guy, and um, and so and we so we see him like running through the the museum and it's all of these same things, the opening image, the opening sequence, the mysterious threat and the hook, all of those same things are happening in Lord of the Rings. They take a little bit of a different approach with their prologue where they have lady Galadriel. The first opening image has her voice and we hear the, the now very well-known music to Lord of the Rings going. And she talks, she talks about like, um, you know, things that were, were once lost were forgotten and, you know, stuff passed into legend. And she starts talking about the, the history of Middle Earth to kind of, again, that opening sequence and imagery is just there to get everybody accustomed to the world and the story that they're, they're going into. These are all steps that most stories have in their, in their, first, uh, in their first stage. So after that, let's take a look. So here's some more. Then you have the hero entrance. So again, if we go back to Lord of the Rings, even in the Fellowship of the Ring, so after that first opening sequence, if we go back here, or the opening image, the opening sequence, they talk about the war, like how Sauron was defeated by Isildur and, and then Isildur's demise. So... That all of that happens before we even meet Frodo. And, and even then, we meet Bilbo first, and then we meet Frodo. But um, eventually, there's the hero's entrance, and we see them for the first time. And then we see the hero in their mundane world. So this would be Frodo hanging out with Bilbo. Then eventually, he's like he goes out to the woods to read a book and wait for Gandalf. And then the foster parent. So if we go back to Star Wars, you have Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. Um, and this is very common. Shannara Chronicles has this. Um, Lord of the Rings has this. Bilbo would be the, the foster parent. Um, let's see. I mean, gosh, there's some uh, in um, Harry Potter, you have the uncle and aunt who are like terrible to Harry. Okay. So again, can that step be skipped? Does this hero have to have a foster parent? No. Especially the shorter the story, the less steps there will be. And then uh, the last step that we have on here is the call to adventure. Now, are there more? Yes. Um, and in the call to adventure, you'll have like, for example, um, the call to adventure happens in several different stages, but it's, when in Lord of the Rings, Gandalf gives Frodo the ring and says, keep it secret, keep it safe. Or it's in Star Wars, it happens, um, it happens twice. You have first, you have Obi-Wan tells Luke to come with him to, to Alderaan and learn the ways of the Force. But then Luke goes into what's called the refusal of the call and he says, no, I can't do that. My uncle needs me here on the farm. But then again, it happens again when his uncle and Aunt Beru are slain at the hands of the Empire, but this time he accepts the call. So um, there's that.
So that is that is essentially how to structure your story. We just discuss all the major plot events. As I said before, you have the biggest ones, which are the acts. Then those are broken up into stages. And both the acts and the stages, those are your main pieces. And they are, I would say, for the most part, critical. Like they're, they're mandatory for the most part. But you know, the smaller the story, the less of the the less the stages you'll have. For steps, it is th those are optional, okay? And they are the smallest major plot events that there are. Okay, this has been Josh Coker representing StoryNinjas.com. You can check us out at Story-Ninjas.com, and um, and I hope this has been helpful. If it has, go ahead and check us out and give us a like. Go ahead and subscribe. And then also you can check me out on all the different social medias at Josh Miss Prime, J-O-S-H-U-M-U-S-P-R-I-M-E at Josh Miss Prime. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Josh Coker signing off. Take it easy.